I'm inside a character creator now. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is just connecting my texture maps, connecting your diffuse, normal and roughness. Make sure that with the normal that you set it to normal map, there's also an option to set it to a bump map. So make sure you set it to normal. And then we'll be doing a little bit of tweaking to the shader. Right, so if you continue scrolling down here, you can see there's a bunch of other texture maps that you can um, import. I'm going to leave them at their default. So this is your micro normal map. If you just double click, you can then change the map. And this is your micro normal mask, which you can, of course, paint your own um, map and then import this into. So with the micro normal here, you can change the tiling of the map. So if I zoom in a bit closer and I increase the strength. You can change the tiling of the map here. And the fidelity of the uh, like the normal map from our ZBrush scene um, won't show through here until we enter skin gen. So don't worry if it's not looking very crisp right now. Uh, we will be seeing better results in a bit. Uh, the great thing here is that if you scroll to the roughness section here, you actually have control over different regions of the face and how shiny they appear. So for example, if I jump into the advanced tab here, we can uh, increase the shyness of the forehead. And then the cheeks, even to the neck. And the lips, like this. So uh, there's lots of control here which is really great. So you don't have to rely on painting a perfect roughness map. You can paint a good base and then um, control regions directly in here in real time. And then of course you can change the subsurface scatter. I think by default it's actually on quite a high. So I think the value between one and 1 1.5 works quite nice. Maybe like 1.25. So if I turn it all the way down to zero, you can see uh, the effect of no subsurface. And then you can also change how much subsurface appears in different regions of the face so for example if i go to the nose over here if you look closely you can see that i'm changing the scale of the nose here so so you can also change that so again lots of control for look deving the skin so the next thing that i done was created my own sclera and iris map so i import that now if you want to change your uh, iris and sclera color you go to the cornea left and cornea right here and we can just double click and then put our map so like this okay and then if you select um, one of these you scroll down you can also change say like the brightness of the iris and of course um and this of the sclera as well. So lots of control. You can of course do the same thing to the teeth and the tongue. I uh, just select them. You can jump over here. You can open up the mouth. And you can look dev. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is um, setting up some some depth of field and making the scene look a bit nicer. So if we jump first into visual. We have um, this ambient occlusion. If we push up the blend and I say view AO, we can see what's happening here. So this is being multiplied on top of the model. So um, a very light blend is quite nice. Something like this and you can view it here. So it's very, very subtle. If we turn on the HDR effect as well, at this tone map, uh, by default it's set uh, much lower so it's very contrasty like this uh, I like to have something like this if you push them up quite high then you can get a very um, subtle contrast it just looks a bit nicer as well you can also turn on activate IBL and then import your own HDR images here as well I prefer to use the lights inside of character creator I just think they um, react a bit more realistically to the skin and if you want to edit the lights you can just go into scene and like I showed in the intro, um, you can show the light uh, and then rotate like this. And for a spotlight, if you select it, 
go into the settings you have lots of options for this so we can change like how high quality the resolution is for the unique shadows so stuff where like the shadows of the hair will be cast on the face and such so you can change the values of that and depth of field so um, if we jump into the camera here and then in the settings we have this activate button uh, to find where you want uh, the focus to be you can go to pick target and select the target that you want you can see straight away there that it's uh, found these regions so we can scroll down here to um, view depth of field regions we can see what's happening here so uh, the red will be the focused region and then um, the other colors will suggest uh, out of focus so you can see how the if I turn the activate on and off the ears are being blurred um, yeah so lots of controls here to get a nice looking uh, final render inside of CC so what I'll do next is I'll jump into skin gen and we'll have some fun uh, exploring that all right so now we're in skin gen if we select this first skin base layer and you scroll down um, you'll be able to see all your maps attached here you can continue to attach more maps if you wish or change them through here um, if you go to strength you can change the strength of the normal map here so it's maybe something like 6.5 you also have the option to change the uh, brightness hue and saturation of the skin and uh, color balance it like this you'll be able to see it's not affecting the lips the lips have their own editor down here so I think what's really great about this is that we don't feel too much pressure in the earlier texturing stages to make perfect maps uh, so character creator still allows a lot of flexibility for us to um, change the color or the um, the normal effects of the skin in different regions or like the roughness map uh, as we go so we don't feel we have to go back into Mari and make huge changes to the skin we can kind of just take care of all of that sort of stuff here so um, if I just undo all of that let's go into our smart gallery if we jump into the realistic human skin package we jump to skin you see this list down here if we say we start with um, let's do normal effects all you have to do is simply pick one that you like the look of so these will be uh, skin normals that will sit over the top of ours say we don't like the lips from our XYZ map maybe we don't feel it fits the character um, as we wanted we can grab this one say you can just drag and drop it in here And then uh, a new layer is added. And if you select the layer, you can drop the opacity down and up, and you can see the effects it's having on the lips here. Say I like the look of this one. I can leave this, leave this layer on. Quite like some of these uh, sharp details here. So of course you can just scroll down this huge list and um, add any type of um, normal effect that you like. So say we want to add this uh, layer for the veins okay we see this huge vein on the head and it also adds this green color so if I scroll down here you can see the green colors here you can change the opacity of the green color and you can see the effect and then all you have to do is turn down the layer and you can have a very subtle uh, vein in the head and on the side of the head here you can scroll down you can see the mask that it's affecting you can choose to remove this active part here so say we don't want this one on the head but we want to keep this we can remove this we can also change this mask if you just double click you'll be uh, navigated to all of these masks here and it will show you uh, different regions that it will affect so the white will be where it will affect black will be no effect um, so yeah very very simple and very easy to understand and it also gives you flexibility to then take these maps, drag them into Photoshop, uh, paint your own custom map and then import it. So you have full control over uh, where say the veins will um, affect the face. 
So say I want this, but very subtle like this. And it's all about subtlety with skin. Remember, we've used texturing XYZ here, so we have lots of skin detail. We don't want to overdo it, but at the same time, you know, it is a lot of fun. So uh, feel free to just drag and drop what you like and just make sure that things aren't at full intensity. Everything it should be about subtlety here. So with skin details, if I scroll down, you also, of course, have stuff for the body. So in my case, this demonstration is just focusing on the head. That's why everything's um, related to the face. But if you're doing a full character, you have lots of um, presets for the body too. So say I like the look of this dull skin here. You can drag and drop this in. And the best way to see its effect is just to turn the layer on and off. So this layer is really cool. Like what it's doing is it's reddening the nose and adding some um, some unevenness to the tone of the skin. So you can see here, and I think that that really adds something. So I can leave this in. I can, of course, add my own mask. Say I don't want it to affect the nose. I can paint the nose out. You can, of course, change the color of it. So let's change it to green. You can see the effect. So yeah, lots and lots of control here. You can of course do the same thing for here for the eyes, so let's do a dull skin on the eyes. So this looks really cool too. We can jump into blemish now. We can drag these moles, or freckles. Alright, and then if you select the layer here, you can scale them. You can tell them. Offset, rotate, you can change the pattern scale like this. You can change this just to a single color. Dual color is better for sure. Change the opacity of the layer. So there's um, so much flexibility and you can just keep adding so much detail to the skin. And slowly, if I turn these all off now, You can see the effect this is having already. So you can even add an acne scar preset here. So if I drag and drop this in, press add. You can see this is more of like a normal effect than before. They were a bit more um, color focused. So uh, here you can select the acne scar. We can turn the layer down, but it just adds a little bit more detail if your character wants more rougher skin around the, the beard area like this all right so with eyebrows navigate to makeup and special effects if i scroll down to the male presets if you just double click get these eyebrows here scroll down you can change uh the brightness hue saturation opacity can even use the cutoff to shave them down and then you have this uh, normal strength here too so you can turn that up or down so lots of control for this what I'll do now is I'll jump into my scene and show you how I built the skin using skin gen and the final look with the eyebrows included First thing I did was just add some of the normal presets uh, just to enhance some of the wrinkles, for example, around the eyes. Like this. And also I quite like this uh, lip preset here. I felt like the vertical lines uh, match the reference a bit better than the XYZ displacement. I then just made a lot of color variation layers. So if you look at the forehead, you had to see a very subtle uh, enhancement to the color variation on this layer. Sorry. Here. and this is just around the eyes very subtle again and um just continuing to build some very subtle freckle layers and then using masks in order to define where i want these freckles to appear so for example here if you look at the top of the head you can see that i just want it to affect the scalp area so i was observing the references and making sure i tried to replicate that as close as possible by um adding in the layers and then adding on the masks um 
to be able to define a specific region I wanted the layer to affect. And he had a lot of freckles around his uh, forehead and scalp. So for example here, uh, Sunburn layer uses the utility R map, but you can see that it's only affecting the lower part of the face and that's because I added in uh, this mask here. If I turn this one on, we can see that um, the mask affects all of this region here but with a green color. So if I turn this to red, see what happens there. Let's take this layer and then change the opacity of this, this layer here. Give the nose more redness, something like this. Um, I also added in hair layers, so you can see the beard. Gives that a five o'clock shadow look. And same for the scalp. So this just uh, helps blend those hair cards in a bit nicer into the skin, uh, which makes things feel a bit more natural. And then finally here, if I zoom in, just really quickly remove the uh, depth of field. So you can see here, I added in the capillaries as well. Uh, this just does a really nice job of uh, enhancing that translucent feeling of the skin, feeling like there's uh, layers. So I really like this layer here. Um, if you jump into content, you go up to skin and it's down here in capillary. You can drag some of these in. You can see I also added in the eyebrows. I also made the neck more red and added this uh, bump for the neck too. You also have the option to uh, change the blending mode of the layer. And then also uh, the different channels and uh, which region of the body you would like to focus on. So you can just select any of those. And then the great thing is I've been testing exporting this out and Character Creator basically bakes all of this information into the diffuse map. All of the sliders that we set earlier for the roughness of the skin will get baked into the roughness map as well. So uh, all of that information gets baked in and then you can use that say in Unreal or even bring it into an offline renderer which is something that I'm uh, testing at the moment too and hopefully you guys will see the results of. So yeah, in the next video, you're going to be seeing the character in Unreal um, using iClone and uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, the past few videos. It's helped you get a better understanding of uh, the workflow and uh, character creator and uh, how to use SkinGen to make some nice looking skin.